say amen again. Amen. But truly, God has been good and gracious to us yes. Yes. by allowing us to be here on this morning amen. in his presence amen. and in the presence of each other amen. to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. And for that, we should always be thankful. Amen. We could have kept that last song going, huh? Amen. 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 Yeah, masterful work by yes. Brother Massey. Masterful mm -hmm. Massey. <laughs> yeah, we thank uh, we thank everyone for the various uh, for the various roles that they played with leading us in our worship service. Uh, thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, the scriptures that have been read, mm -hmm. the songs that have been sung, mm -hmm. and thanks in advance for those who will lead us throughout the remainder of the service after the message. Thank you for being here as well, and thank you for lifting your voices, uh, singing praise, singing praises to our God. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, please turn to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 27 through 30. And John chapter 4. Listen to what the Bible says. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. This morning, our message title is a testimony from a tainted vessel. A testimony from a tainted vessel. So we look at verse 27. The disciples saw Jesus, and we know in verse in chapter four, rather, leading up to verse twenty-seven, Jesus is having a conversation with the Samaritan woman. Amen. So the disciples they see Jesus talking to this Samaritan woman, and even though they didn't say anything, their minds start racing. Mm -hmm. Why is he talking to her? You know, of all of the people that he could have encountered, mm -hmm. why is Jesus sitting down with a Samaritan yeah. woman mm -hmm. out in public? Mm -hmm. Could he not have waited until no one else was around if he just had to talk to her that man? Mm -hmm. Why is he even talking to her at all? He's Jesus, and this woman is a Samaritan. It makes me think about <clears throat> the time in Luke 15 when the Pharisees uh, questioned why Jesus interacted with the, uh, with the tax collectors. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, Jesus knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He was fulfilling his earthly mission that had been given to him mm -hmm. by his father. Mm -hmm. So he was sitting down talking to this Samaritan woman. And we know the history of the Jews and the Samaritans, they had hostilities between them. As a matter of fact, the historian Josephus even writes that on one occasion, on the eve before the Passover, that the Samaritans defiled the temple by throwing bones on the porch. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you a snapshot of what that might look like, imagine if we showed up here this Sunday morning and, we, and the hostility between us and the community at large was so bad that our entire church property was covered with trash. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so that was the, uh, the impact when the Samaritans threw uh, bones on the porch of the temple uh, because of the hostilities, that the hostile relationship rather that existed between them and the Jews. This is one of the reasons why in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 33, we know that story about uh, the one that has been labeled as the Good Samaritan, why Jesus used the Samaritan to teach a lesson. He used the Samaritan to give a backhand slap, if you will, 
to people who already thought that they were so good and so perfect. But yet these good, perfect church-going folk walked past this man who had been robbed and who had been beaten and left destitute on the side of the road. You know, the, the, the Levites had to get to the temple. The, the other churchgoers, when you go back and read that parable, they had to get to the building, but they didn't realize that an opportunity to be of good service was in front of them right then and there. Amen. So to drive the point home, Jesus explained in that, uh, in that lesson in Luke 10, 25-33, that a Samaritan saw a person who was destitute. Now imagine being a Jewish person numbered among God's chosen people who think that you are, that you, that, that just because of your birth that you already have an automatic ticket to heaven. Yeah. Imagine having that mindset and then Jesus who's, who, who, was, uh, who was affirmed publicly as the son of God mm -hmm. is telling you that a Samaritan had more compassion, more concern than you did. Mm -hmm. so, that's the, so that's why Jesus used the Samaritan in that passage mm -hmm. because of the hostile relationship that existed between them and the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, lest I, stay too, lest I stray too far from the point that he had grabbed the attention of his disciples because he was sitting down, interacting mm -hmm. with a Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. Saul would look at this woman and say that she was a tainted person. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because she was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And my church family, this lady, she was a... She was tainted in one aspect simply because of who she was, not because of what she did. Right. She was tainted because of a bad blood, bad relationship that existed between her, her group, mm -hmm. her ethnic group, and the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. She had not done anything to the disciples. She had not been disrespectful toward them. She had not mistreated them. She had not even mistreated Jesus. But simply because of her ethnic group, she was automatically viewed as somebody who was tainted. And I believe that we may know something about that, being that we are numbered among those whose skin have been kissed by the sun, amen. Right. amen. That, that sometimes we automatically are stained not because of what we've done, right. but simply because of the ethnic group in which we were born. Right. Amen. But my church family, listen to this and listen to this real good. Okay. To look at somebody and make a bad and make a negative decision about them simply based on looks is wrong. Amen. It's dead wrong. It's Amen. sinful. Amen. James talks about being a respecter of person and he's very clear cut about that. Mm -hmm. However, what I want to encourage us to do, and we'll see it later on in the passage, mm -hmm. is because someone may view us as an individual who's stained mm -hmm. and who is of low value, mm -hmm. we still can be effective instruments in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Look, 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 let me tell you this way. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a student at, at Prairie View, mm -hmm. we had a professor who would often tell us that you are not who they are say you are. Mm -hmm. All right. And my church family, in light of us living in the society that we live in, mm -hmm. let us be mindful that we are not who they say we are. Amen. Instead, we are who he, yeah. he yeah. says yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. And so as we look at this Samaritan woman, she was tainted because of her ethnicity. Mm -hmm. But as we dig a little deeper and look more into her lifestyle, she had a moral stain on her as well. Amen. When we see in verse number six, the Bible says, now Jacob's well was there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour, that's noontime. Mm -hmm. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, get me a drink. Now, he sat, he was by this well, and it was noonday. The hottest point in the day. Mm -hmm. Historically speaking, people went to draw water from the well during the cool time of the day, mm -hmm. the evenings. Mm -hmm. This lady was out there during the hot part of the day. And the Bible says, the Bible does not give any indication that anyone else was out there with her. Mm -hmm. It was customary for them to go during the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And so one would wonder, why is it that this lady would be out there 
to gather water from the well during the hot part of the day. As we look further into her life, we're able to see, we're able to draw some conclusions as to, a conclusion rather, as to possibly why she went out there during the hot part of the day as opposed to the cool of the day like everyone else. We're still in John chapter 4, Amen. verse number 16. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. Mm -hmm. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. You have had five husbands. And the one whom you have now is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. Mm -hmm. So we are able to conclude that this lady probably was not there in the cool of the day with everyone else mm -hmm. because she knew that her living situation was not right. Amen. Jesus knew that her living situation was not right. Yeah. However, Jesus said to her, go ahead and bring me a drink of water. Amen. He didn't say to her, you need to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z. He said, listen, I'm, I'm sitting right here with this lady. I have an opportunity to interact with her. And instead of being so difficult and complicating things, let me just go ahead and deal with this lady right now where she is. Amen. So he asked her a question. He said, go get your husband. She said, I have no husband. Amen. Jesus said, you're truthful because you've had five and the one that, and the man that you're with now is not your husband. Amen. Nevertheless, Jesus, he sat there with her, and he had a conversation. But I want to drop something in our hands for us to think about. This lady, when she came face to face with Jesus, she was honest about her state of living. She was honest about what she was doing in her life. And my church family, before we look down our noses at this lady, the first question, the first thing I point out to us mm -hmm. is that we are not perfect people either. Amen. We, may, we may not be living with someone with whom we're not married. Amen. We may not be, we may not have the past that this lady did who had the five husbands. Amen. But nevertheless, church family, we as individuals are not perfect. Amen. And just because we are not perfect doesn't mean that we that we should shy away from having an honest, open, and transparent conversation with Jesus. Amen. But the thing about it is, when we converse with him and allow him to talk to us, Amen. we need to follow this lady's example and be open and honest about where we are in our lives. All right. Look here, church family. Let me tell you, just in case we forgot, mm -hmm. it doesn't do us any good to hide our dirt from Jesus because he knows about it anyway. Amen. Amen. And so what I'm encouraging us to do is to take the mindset that this woman shows us. Mm -hmm. And when we interact with Jesus, just go ahead and keep it real with him. Amen. Why? Because he's not in our lives to hurt us, but he's in our lives to help us improve in the areas we need to grow in. Amen. In addition to seeing what this lady did and her conversation, let's look at what happens next. So as we scroll down to verse number 29, look at verse number 29. Actually, let me start at verse 27. And at this point, his disciples came. They marveled that he talked with a woman. Did no one say, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water pot, went way into the city, and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Verse 30, they went out of the city and came to him. Drop down to verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So this lady, after she came face to face with Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus told her, that her lifestyle was what it was. Mm -hmm. Notice what she did next. She didn't sit down and give up. Mm -hmm. However, she went out into the city mm -hmm. and told everyone with whom she crossed paths mm -hmm. to come see a man who told her 
everything that she had ever done. Amen. What can we learn from this lady? This lady who some would see as a tainted or a dirty or a substandard vessel. The first thing that we can learn is that she had some humility. Amen. She was humble enough to talk to Jesus. Amen. And not only that, she was humble enough that when she went out into the city, she just simply said to others, come on and see a man. Amen. She didn't go out into that city with an air of arrogance about herself. Amen. Why is that? Because they would have missed the invitation that she had given them Amen. to come and see a man. Amen. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, when we live our daily lives, yeah. let us be mindful of the fact yeah. that we don't want to do anything to cloud the message Amen. that we carry with us today, Amen. which is to come and meet our Lord Jesus. Yeah. All right. If we go out and deal with people with an arrogant attitude, mm -hmm. with an arrogant mindset, mm -hmm. just being an arrogant person, well, guess what happens next? One of, both two things happen. One is, we push people away. Amen. And secondly, we invite people to try to find faults in our lives. Amen. We might as well be honest about it. Amen. How many times have we met somebody who was arrogant and we said, who do they think they are? Amen. How many times have we interacted with people who acted like that they hadn't sinned since Noah, Dr. Ark, and we say, you need to go ahead and stop playing because your hands are just as dirty as mine. Yes, right. How many times have we heard it said that if you put on your halo, it'll slide down and become a noose around your neck. Right. How many days, man, somebody, when we lift up ourselves, look, look here, look here, it's like, it's like that monkey that climbs a tree. Uh -huh. The higher he climbs, yeah. the more he's exposed, amen. amen. Well, likewise, when we lift ourselves up, yeah. the higher we push ourselves, amen. then the more we are exposed. Amen. And if we want people to focus on our Christ amen. instead of us and our own shortcomings, amen. Then we need to push him out front. Amen. How? By simply saying, come on and see a man. Amen. She had humility. Secondly, this lady, this tainted vessel, Amen. she was honest. Amen. She said, she didn't exaggerate. Amen. She went out and she said, come on and see a man mm -hmm. who told me everything that I did. Mm -hmm. Come on and see a man. Who told me everything that I did. Mm. Notice the focus was on what she had done. Amen. And I want you to listen to me real close. Amen. Because sometimes when we look at what God has done for us. Yeah. We may compare what he has done in our lives yeah. to someone else's lives. And think what he has done in someone else's life has more value than what he's done in our lives. Right. Let, let me help you understand where I'm coming from. You see, church family, in order to experience God's love, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a person who was homeless and living on the street to experience that. Right. God is just not in the business of blessing people who are homeless, Amen. but he's in the business of blessing people who, are shell, who live in a house as well. Amen. He's not just in the business of blessing the person who's incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Our God is the God of the free person who's never been locked up. Amen. Oh, Y'all making this hard this morning. Right. Let, let me tell you like this here. Let me tell you like this here. See, some would have you and I to believe that just because we never had to live under a bridge, that, amen, that we have less value and a lower perception of God's grace than that other person did. But if God helped you to keep your family together, you got a reason to say amen. amen. If God helped your children turn around so that you could get a good night's sleep, you got a reason to say amen. amen. If God is able to help you to keep a level head and a level and amount of comfort in the midst of this pandemic, going to work every day, not knowing how much longer your job will, may or may not last, then you got a reason to say amen. amen. See, it doesn't matter what he has done for us, as long as we know that his involvement in our lives has made a difference, then we can praise him, shout hallelujah, and say amen, just like a person who was at the lowest end of the total pole. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? See, there are some people who believe because you haven't had a Lazarus experience that you don't appreciate God. What do you mean by a Lazarus experience? Lazarus died. Jesus told him to get up. And when you see Lazarus again, he's sitting at the table right next to Jesus. Yeah. Not everyone needs a Lazarus experience to draw closer to him. Y'all yeah. 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 got me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So not only was she honest, Amen. she was also 
sensitive. Mm -hmm. She went out and she just said, come see a man mm -hmm. who told me everything that I ever did. Amen. Notice she didn't go down the list of everything that she had done. Amen. Church family, let's be sensitive enough mm -hmm. and understanding enough mm -hmm. that our business ain't everybody's business. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. I don't know, I might need to say that again. Amen. Huh? Amen. Here's where I'm going with all of this. Mm -hmm. You see, brothers and sisters, everybody can't handle everything. Amen. All they need to know is that the Lord made a difference in our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're in a place where you can do a one-on-one -on -one conversation, that, that's fine. But to get up and publicly broadcast in detail, everybody can't handle that. Everybody can't handle that. Mm -hmm. Not only can it be discouraging, mm -hmm. but it can also be encouraging. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by encouraging? Somebody can look at you and say, well, if he did it, or she did it, then I can do it. Amen. Amen. Brother Terry said, mm. <laughs> he raised up off his seat a little bit. <laughs> but see, what we cannot get lost in mm -hmm. is that as God's vessels, as the Lord's vessels, Amen. he doesn't need any extra help from us to be effective. Amen. He doesn't need an embellished story to save people the same way he did in the first century. Amen. All we got to do is this is just tell that same story Amen. that Peter told on Pentecost mm -hmm. and it's just as powerful today as it was more than 2,000 years ago. Amen. Yeah. The Bible still tells us, teaches us, when we deal with people in Colossians uh, chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, that we should exercise wisdom and have our speech seasoned with salt. Right, mm -hmm. right. That, that not only applies to how we talk to people, mm -hmm. but we should have some wisdom to know what and what not to share with people. Amen. Because at the end of the day, it's not about us glorifying ourselves. Amen. It's about demonstrating our own feebleness mm -hmm. so that people will see the power of God working in our lives. Amen. What else we see about this lady? She was sensitive. She was so sensitive and when it came to interacting with people that she did not want to say anything to harm them. In Acts chapter 16, verse 28 and following, we know the story how there was a jailer who was, uh, who, who was about to kill himself when a miracle was worked in that prison and he thought all the prisoners were gone. The Philippian jailer him, And he knew that if someone got away on his watch, that he was going to have to pay a price. As he drew his sword and got ready to kill himself, he was told by God's people, do yourself no harm. And if we narrow down our message, church family, it's not very much different from that. We're encouraging others to do themselves no harm. How so? Without Jesus in their lives, they're doing themselves harm. Amen. But with him in their lives, Amen. they are now positioned to get some help. Amen. That's the Amen. simplicity of the message, which is, do yourself no harm. Yeah. Another thing we see about this lady, she was, she was sensitive, she was honest, she was humble, but her testimony was pure. It was pure simply because she said, come on and see Jesus. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, that message, if we just leave it in its purest form, mm -hmm. it'll do what God designed it to do. Amen. Amen. During her interaction, Jesus said to her that he would give her water, and if she drank it, she would never thirst. Amen. He is still the living water. Amen. He's not only the living water, He's the bread of life also. He's not only the bread of life, but he says in Matthew 5 that whoever hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Because he's the bread of water, because he's the living water and the bread of life, and he makes it possible for people to no longer hunger and thirst after righteousness, yeah. then we're able to conclude that a person who's seeking a meaningful life, that they can find everything that they need in Jesus. Amen. And we who are his tainted vessels, who are his weight staff, because he's offering living water and living bread, we who are his weight staff, all we got to do is serve it in the same manner that he prepared it. He didn't tell us to go in here and rewrite any verses. Yeah. He just said, take what I've given you. 
and share it with others the way that I gave it to you. All right. And that's his wait staff. We know how a wait staff work when they go to a restaurant. You know, they put the menu out, you order from the menu, and they bring it out to you. You know, you don't go to McDonald's ordering shrimp and lobster because it's not on their menu. All right. <laughs> we serve yeah. what's on the menu. All right. And in order for God to get glory through us, mm -hmm. we got to make sure that we have whatever we serve is on his menu. Amen. Yes, Amen. Her testimony was pure. Mm -hmm. But one thing as we look at this, when Jesus said, give me some water, he could have used a whole lot of metaphors. Mm -hmm. But I like in this instance that he used water. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at water, water sustains life. Amen. We can live longer without food mm -hmm. than we can without water. Mm -hmm. When we look at the makeup of our blood, it's roughly about three-fourths water. Mm -hmm. When we look at the world, the majority of the earth, rather, it is water. Mm -hmm. And he's emphasizing the importance of, uh, of water and how the, he emphasizes the importance of the role that water plays in sustaining life. Mm -hmm. And what he wants us to see it's just as water sustains life effectively, mm -hmm. that he's able to do a whole lot more than water does. All right. See, if this earth had no water, yeah. everything will die. Yeah. As long as we have water on this earth and access to it, then we can live. Amen. Well, if Jesus can give us more than that, mm -hmm. he's letting us know that, hey, if you can identify with water sustaining life, mm -hmm. then imagine what I can do for you if you just simply let me in. All right. Amen. A testimony from a tainted vessel. Mm -hmm. This lady, she was tainted. Then her testimony was pure. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about having a pure testimony mm -hmm. is it allows the glory to go where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. We remember the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 saying that we have this treasure in earthen vessels mm -hmm. so that the excellency of the power will be of God and not us. Yeah. Well, my church family, we want to make sure that we present things as God would have us to Amen. so that he would get the glory. Amen. Why is that important? Because the only being that is in competition with God for getting glory is our adversary, the devil. Amen. When we look at his role, he through, when, he, when we look at his role, that's been his ultimate mission Amen. is to get glory that was due to God. Amen. Think about what he did when, as shortly after Jesus was born, he influenced the policy makers to put a policy in place to kill babies who are under the age of two. We remember that? Amen. Yeah, Amen. That's his, that was his attempt Amen. to prevent God from getting glory. Amen. What about after Jesus fasted on the other side of those 40 days yeah. when he told them, hey, turn these stones into bread? Hey, climb on top of this roof and jump. That was his attempt to stop God from getting glory. Amen. And even on Calvary's cross, I, I'm not in the mind of Satan, but I can imagine he was looking back saying, I, I couldn't get him when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. I couldn't break him after his fast. But I know, but I wonder, how is he going to get off this cross? Mm -hmm. How is he going to escape this death? Amen. And I imagine that when, when, when Jesus was on the cross, Satan probably started celebrating a little bit. Amen. And when he was laid in that grave and that tomb was sealed, he probably said, oh, I really have him now. Mm -hmm. But one thing that Satan did forget yeah. is that the God of heaven yeah. has the power over death. Mm -hmm. So even though his son experienced a physical death yeah. and was laid in the grave and sealed in the tomb, mm -hmm. Satan forgot that Jesus had the ability to get out of that grave and to break the seal of that tomb right. all by himself and demonstrate his ability mm -hmm. over our greatest enemy, which is death. Yeah. Let me help you understand where I'm coming from. What does that have to do with the glory of God? That lets us know that not even the grave can prevent God from getting glory. All right. Did he not? Boy, y'all. Right. Not even the grave can prevent God from getting glory. Yes, because when Jesus broke forth mm -hmm. and he got up with all power in his hands, yeah. it was undeniable that who was in charge then. Amen. Nobody could deny, amen, somebody, amen. that who had supreme power amen. and who had supreme authority amen. and who was in control of all things. Yeah. Yes can wreck some havoc here on earth. Yeah. But let us be mindful of the fact that even though he can make our, my, our lives miserable, yeah. he does not ultimately have the final say. Yeah. He may be able to destroy relationships that we have with people. Mm -hmm. He may even get us to do some things to harm ourselves that we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. But I'm so thankful that he doesn't have the final 
final say in all things. Because we still have a Lord who sits high and he looks down low. And he's not looking as a spectator. He's looking and making decisions and, and putting plans in place that can not only bless us right now, but can bless us throughout our future generations. I'm so glad that we have a God who's able to control all things and he just simply says to us, keep your testimony pure. I know in life we'll make mistakes and people will see them and not let us forget that we've made them. But we're so thankful that we have some words to utter from our lips that are as pure as the God who has given them to us. So in spite of our own tatedness, let's keep our testimony pure. In spite of our bad past, let's keep this testimony pure. And if we happen to fall down in the future, let's get out. Yes, and keep our testimony yes, fair. Right. Testimony Amen. from a tainted vessel. Right. One thing about being a child of God, mm -hmm. in the eyes of others, I might have a few stains on me, but I still belong to Him. Amen. And as a person who belongs to Him, He tells me that if I confess my faults to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin yes, and sir. cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Yes, doesn't mean that he condones sin. He just says as long as we're faithful and committed, he got our back. Yes. And he's in a, he's in a position yeah. to not only get our back, but to keep our backs covered. Okay, but the key is, we have that privilege mm -hmm. because we belong to him. Yes. And if there's anybody here this morning who does not belong to him, you can become one of his through faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. And then for those of us who may have gotten sidetracked along the way, the invitation is for you as well. Our brother Massey, brother Massey will come and lead us in a song. And while he's singing, I invite all of us to examine our lives. Have that honest conversation like the Samaritan woman had. We may not be sitting at Jacob's well, but, but we're sitting in his presence right now. Have that honest conversation. Identify areas we need to fix. And go ahead and give all of our problems to him. And allow him to help us fix them. Amen. Go ahead and stand up to your feet right now. What can one?